there has long been established in Philadelphia an extremely interesting institution, the University Museum of the University of Pennsylvania. There are, of course, in America hundreds of... Hello, I'm Andrea Mitchell. I've had the good fortune to travel all over the world and to visit many wonderful museums, just as you are. But today, I envy you, because you are about to embark on a marvelous journey. You'll visit exotic lands, you'll see fantastic treasures, you'll learn about people around the world and their cultures, and you'll do it without even leaving Philadelphia. What you'll find here inside the museum today, just as visitors have for over 100 years, are the objects at the very heart of the sciences of archaeology and anthropology. So perhaps we should find out what those ologies mean from the men and women who work in those sciences every day here at the museum. If I were to give you a textbook definition of archaeology, I would tell you that archaeology is the systematic and scientific study of the human past through the retrieval and analysis of its material remains. The basic definition of archaeology is digging ancient things up and studying them. And for me, archaeology is a kind of exotic detective work. And we're looking at things as they connect with each other, which is probably the most critical thing in archaeology. How do things connect with each other? Anthropology translates out as the study of man, but that's too broad and not specific enough. Physical anthropology is the study of the biology of extinct and living humans. And specifically what we do is we collect actually the, um, the, the remains of humans when we deal with extinct populations, and we collect information on living humans that allow us to understand the variation in living humans and in extinct humans. Cultural anthropology, that is the study of human culture, no matter where it occurs, how it occurs, uh, but culture as a very, very special human phenomenon, something that sets human beings apart from all other animals. So by looking at the things people have made, from pyramids and statues to feathered headdresses, even language, we get a better understanding of the people themselves. And the museum is like an attic where we store everything that's been collected over the years. Except that this attic belongs to the entire family of humanity. And the stuff that's stored up there tells us who we are and who our ancestors were, our roots. And the stuff we keep comes to our attic from all over the world and from ancient times to today. 
and you have probably already noticed what a magnificent attic the museum is. The rotunda that contains the Chinese collection and our famous crystal ball is an architectural masterpiece. It's the highest unsupported masonry dome in the United States. The museum building was designed in the 1890s to provide a Philadelphia home for the treasures being brought back from expeditions. A group of people in Philadelphia got together and decided to send out the first American expedition to the Near East, which went to what is today Iraq and excavated in the south at the city of Nippur, which was the sort of Vatican city of the ancient Sumerians. An important aspect of this museum is that most of the things you see have been collected on expeditions that have encompassed the world. The museum has sent out over 300 expeditions in its 100-year history, archaeological expeditions to unearth remains, and ethnographic expeditions. Rather than digging up artifacts, these scientists study the people living in different parts of the world and their way of life. Perhaps you're curious about how the objects that you see on exhibit actually get from where they're found to Philadelphia. Well, to begin with, they're not smuggled out of a country in Indiana Jones's knapsack. In the past, they were crated and sent by ship to Philadelphia. Naturally, the arrival of some new acquisitions made for quite unusual and exciting scenes when they were delivered to their new home. Nowadays, people in countries where archaeological excavations take place require that objects be kept in their countries as part of their cultural heritage. What the museum gets is in many ways more valuable. It's the information the objects tell us. Setting up an exhibit to present material to the public is no easy task. Years of work may go into designing and planning before the exhibit is ready to be built. As the keepers of all that stuff in the attic, it's the museum's job to select for display the objects that give the best understanding of a people and their culture. Our curators and staff have a very difficult but rewarding task in preparing new exhibits. The task is a difficult one because they have to appeal to a broad range of audiences from the general public to scholars who come to visit our collections and our many exhibits. But it's rewarding because if we are successful, we can give people a glimpse of the incredible achievements of humankind through time and space. The museum is very proud of its new installation of Living in Balance, the universe of the Hopi, Zuni, Navajo, and Apache in our newly refurbished Ruth and Earl Scott Gallery. Discover Magazine has called us one of the 10 great science museums in the world, and as we move towards the close of the 20th century, we are committed to maintain and hopefully better this level of excellence and further keep our research on the very frontiers of knowledge. Some of the museum's most famous research involves these clay tablets, many of which were found during that first expedition in the 1890s to Nippur in Iraq. Some of them are in the oldest known written language, Sumerian, and are as much as 5,000 years old. The museum has over 30,000 tablets, everything from letters to shopping lists to business and legal documents to schoolwork and even jokes. One of the things that, that uh, really stands out when you get into this material start to read it is the fact that human nature hasn't changed at all over the centuries. And these poor people in Mesop ancient Mesopotamia had exactly the same kind of problems that we do. Uh, you see this particularly from their letters that they write to each other uh, because the letters express anger and jealousy and all, all of the human emotions that one can expect. As a television journalist, I know just as the archaeologist or anthropologist knows that sometimes you have to look beyond the surface to find the real story. Many of the treasures awaiting you in the galleries can be viewed as works of art and admired for their beauty. Others have exciting stories to tell, stories about their place in history and what they meant to the culture that produced them. We call that the cultural context. All of the objects in this room are from Sir Leonard Woolley's excavations of the Royal Cemetery at Ur. What's really important about these objects is that they are complete. What archaeologists normally find are broken bits and pieces. And having a complete piece helps to identify other bits and pieces. And we learn other things. We know that the people at Ur traded for minerals, probably from Turkey or Afghanistan. All of the gold, the lapis, alabaster, and the bronze found in the royal tomb came from somewhere else, 
because there were no minerals in southern Mesopotamia, and the quality of their metalwork is of a highly developed civilization. What is important is that the University Museum is the only place in the United States where you can see such objects. If you want to see other material from the Royal Cemetery, you have to travel to the British Museum in London or to the Iraq Museum in Baghdad. I think one of the most important things to see from ancient Egypt that's in this museum uh, is the material that comes from the palace of a pharaoh called Meremta who ruled about the time of Exodus in the Bible, the, the famous story of, uh, of the Hebrews leaving Egypt. Uh, and the reason why that's important is it's a very impressive experience because we have the columns and the doorways and the gateway with their carvings of Pharaoh and the gods. You actually do feel you're really walking through that palace. Uh, and the other thing that makes it very important is it's the best preserved royal palace ever excavated in Egypt. There's nothing else like it in the whole world. You can see it here in the University Museum or you can't see it. We have here in this museum uh, one of the most magnificent sphinxes that's ever been found. Uh, it's not uh, as big as the Great Sphinx, but it's in a lot better shape. Mummies are something that everyone who comes to a museum wants to go to see. And, uh, and people who work in the museum often wonder about that. I mean, why do people want to go and see the Egyptian mummies above everything else? And again, I think it's because of this feeling that people have in a museum that in various ways they get into direct contact with the past. The Maya civilization flourished in Middle or Mesoamerica for hundreds of years, from the 2nd century BC to the 9th century AD. Maya architects built great pyramids and temples, and stone monuments called stelae were history books in stone that tell about events that had taken place. This one, which was found in what is today Guatemala, commemorates a new king. We've also learned from the things we've collected that different cultures show respect to their leaders in different ways. This cloak from our own Hawaiian islands from around the middle of the 19th century would have been worn by an important leader. We know that because of its length and because of the types of feathers used. Discovering objects like those for yourself can make your visit here a thrilling adventure. As a news reporter, I know that cultures from thousands of years ago still affect events today. The way people think and act, the stories we tell, what makes up our culture or the cultures of other countries, is directly connected to the people and cultures that have gone before. What you'll see in the University Museum are not simply the relics of civilizations that have disappeared or of cultures different than ours. They are a mirror in our attic of humanity that reflects the entire world. And the story they tell is that people around the world and throughout history may be different, but the differences are smaller than you may think, and the similarities are greater than you can imagine. <laughs>